Welcome to Prayer and Bible Band, Lesson 4. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is the sin of greed. The background reading is coming out of 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 22. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 19. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 9. Romans chapter 1, verses 28 through 30. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 through 3. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. The devotional reading is coming out of Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21. 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 22. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. But Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad? that thou eatest no bread. And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise, and eat bread, and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders, and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out, and stone him, that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles, who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters, which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king, then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones, that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned, and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned, and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead. That Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Naboth is not alive but dead. 
And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou not found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasha the son of Ahaja, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 19 So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 9 Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Romans chapter 1 verses 28 through 30 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21 and he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. 
And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. The central verse for today's lesson. I will read the King James Version first, and then the New International Version of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 27. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own soul, but he that hateth gifts shall live. The New International Version of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 27. The greedy bring ruin to their households, but the one who hates bribes will live. The key terms for today's lesson, contemns, temporal and abound. Contemns, to view or treat with contempt, scorn. Temporal, of or relating to time as opposed to eternity, of or relating to earthly life, lay or secular rather than clerical or sacred, abound, to be present in large numbers or in great quantity. The introduction says, it has been said that the root cause of all human misery is greed, self-centeredness and corruption. Greed is selfish and stingy, but God is not broke, nor is he stingy. So it did not come from God. Greed is one of the seven most deadly sins in the Bible. It is included with pride, lust, gluttony, sloth, anger, and envy. These sins lead to other sins which are more deadly and vicious than they are. Greed is a sin directly against one's neighbor. It is a sin against God. It is a mortal sin, for men contemn things eternal for the sake of temporal things. The discussion says, Mahatma Gandhi said, Earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs but not every man's greed. For greed is the desire for material wealth or gain, ignoring the realm of the spiritual. It is intense and selfish desires for something, especially wealth, power, or food. It is also covetousness. And God commanded that men should not covet that which belongs to another. It is the last of the Ten Commandments. Found in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 21. The word of the Lord tells the believer that life does not consist in the abundance of things that a man possesses. So be on your guard against grasping for more things. The believer must be aware that the love of money is the root of all evil. He must be careful that his desire for wealth and riches does not lead him down the wrong path and cause him to fall into the traps of the devil. The hunger for money will cause a person to wander from the faith and cause them to become trapped in the devil's schemes. It is not wrong to desire money, for God said in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, that he has given the believers the power to get wealth so that his covenant can be established. But when a believer becomes so obsessed with acquiring wealth that he will sell his soul to the devil and do anything to gain it, it then becomes a severe problem. Greed is the primary reason so many people are in debt in America, far above their income. This creates hardship and grief for so many people in today's society. Jesus cautioned the believers about being a hoarder. He said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures here on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal everything. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, 
where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Men are greedy for several things, which includes money, sex, and positions or power. There seems to be a growing appetite for more and more, and this has become accepted in many circles. But God yet wants the believers to cry out against greed, for greed alienates them from God. It causes contention between brothers and sisters and breaks down the unity of the church. Ahab the king had everything that his heart could desire, but he coveted poor Naboth's one nice vineyard that was near to him in his heart. He asked Naboth to give it to him and he would pay him for it. Naboth told him that he could not give his inheritance from his father to him. His answer displeased King Ahab and caused him to be in such a state that he laid down and refused to eat. His wife, Queen Jezebel, noticed him and asked him why he was so sad and why he would not eat. He told her how he was asked how he asked Naboth for the vineyard and that he even agreed to pay him for it, but he refused to give it up. The queen reminded him that he was the king and that he was in charge of the kingdom. She encouraged him to get up, eat, and be happy because she would get the vineyard for him. She set up a plot to get Naboth by writing letters in her husband's name to the elders and nobles in Naboth city. She got two witnesses against him falsely and plotted to have him stoned. Greed will cause the enemy to bear false witness against a believer to cause harm. The witnesses said that Naboth had blasphemed God and the king. So the men took Naboth out and stoned him to death. They then sent and told Jezebel that Naboth was dead. Then Jezebel told her husband the king to go and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth because he was dead. Ahab went as his wife told him and took possession of the vineyard. But the eye of the Lord is in every place and he saw what was done to Naboth. God sent the word to Elijah the prophet and told him to go meet Ahab and confront him about killing Naboth. Tell him that in the place that the dogs licked the blood of Naboth, the dogs would lick his blood. He and his queen wife died. The dogs licked his blood, but the dogs ate her body. The conclusion says, greed is a sin and the wages of sin is death. Whether it is power, money, sex, or covetousness, it cannot be tolerated in the church. It must be dealt with by godly leaders. The church must renounce greed in every area because where there is greed, every kind of evil will abound. They must warn believers that they must return to living and communicating the truth that greed is a sure pathway to death of the spirit death of a spiritual relationship with God, and the death of effective witness for Christ. The world does not want the church to reflect the same image that they have. They do not want to see the believers more ruthless than the world. The questions for today's lesson, and you can search the scriptures on your own. Question one, what causes a person to become greedy? Question two, what are the consequences of greed? Question three, how is greed manifested in the lives of people? Question four, what can the church do to help get rid of greed in the church? The essential thought says, the sin of greed will have ugly consequences. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.